Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be doing the number 23 from the AMC 8 of 2020. Now, the AMC 8 of 2020 had a bunch of interesting and creative to solve problems. However, this number 23 wasn't exactly one of them. Anybody who's done AOPS's introduction to counting and probability will already recognize this type of problem from chapter 6. So, this just goes to show that this number 23 is a pretty standard problem. And to solve it, you just need to know some basic counting strategies and principles. So without further ado, let's get into it. Five different awards are to be given to three students. Each student will receive at least one award. In how many ways can the awards be distributed? So this problem is relatively simple in what it's asking. It tells us that there are five different awards that we need to distribute to each of three students. And it wants us to compute the number of ways that these awards can be distributed such that each student receives at least one award. Now, reading through this problem, you should notice a couple of key words and phrases. First off, different. If you have watched my video on the AMC 8 number 25 of 2019, you'll probably remember that that problem was similar in thought to this problem, as in both cases you have to distribute objects to a bunch of people. However, this keyword different makes sure that you can't use the same approach that you would use on that problem on this problem. The awards are all distinguishable from one another, so giving one award to a student and giving another award to an, uh, the same student would be two distinct cases as these awards are different from one another. So this prevents us from using our stars and bars method to distribute indistinguishable objects. So we can't really just use stars and bars to distribute these objects amongst the three students. Next is the keyword at least one award. Whenever you see at least one, you should think complementary counting. As Typically, in these kinds of problems, it is easier to find the cases in which this is not satisfied as compared to the cases in which this is satisfied. At least one means that each student could receive two, three, or four, but that's really complicated to count. So let's just count the number of cases in which some students get zero awards and then subtract that from the num total number of ways that these awards can be distributed. So based on the information provided in this problem, we know that this is a complementary counting problem. And just like in every count complementary counting problem, we first have to compute the number of ways that the awards can be distributed and then subtract the number of ways that awards will be distributed, but they won't fulfill the standards provided in the problem. So first, let's compute the number of ways that these five awards can be distributed. So if we draw a picture of what we're doing, it'll make it much more clear to understand how we're going to get the number of ways to distribute five awards amongst three students. So here I've drawn five dots, and each of them represents an award. Now, each of these dots could go in any of these three boxes. Also, each award is distinct from all the others. So the number of ways for this dot to go to any of the three students has to be multiplied by the number of ways that this dot could go to any of the other three students, and so on and so on. So using this to compute the number of ways that these five awards can be distributed makes it really easy to compute. We see that the first dot can go in a total of three different places. The second dot will also go in a total of three different places. And since these awards are all different, we just multiply up the number of ways for each of them to get our collective number of ways. Doing that, we're going to multiply 3 by itself 5 times. And that will give us a total of 243 different ways to distribute the 5 awards amongst 3 students. 
So this is our total number. Now we need to find the number of ways to distribute the awards such that not all the students will receive at least one award. Some students may receive zero awards. So this can be done in pretty much only two ways. Either one student receives zero awards or two students receive zero awards. We can't have a case where three students receive zero awards because then five awards cannot be distributed. So let's look at the first case where one student is excluded and the other student, two students, receive all the awards. So in this case, it's pretty much the same setup as our original case. We got five awards, but instead of choosing, distributing these five awards amongst three students, we can only distribute them amongst two students. And we have to exclude one student. So looking at each award, we see that instead of going to three total places, each of them can go to two different places. The first award could go to two different places. The second award could go to two different places. And once again, since these awards are all different from one another, we have to multiply the number of ways they can go independently from one another. So we get two times two times two, five times. Now, Here's the thing. This is the number of ways that these five awards could be distributed to the two remaining students. But one student would have to not receive any awards. And this student is not the same as these students. This student is different. So there are three different ways to pick one student to be excluded from the prizes. So we have to multiply that in as well. So in the end, our total computation becomes two times two times two, five times, times three. And this is the case in which we exclude one student. So two to the fifth times three will give us a total of 96 different ways to exclude one student while distributing prizes. Now is the time for the final case where we exclude two students and give all the prizes to one student. Now, this has pretty much the same setup as the other two cases as well, except Instead of distributing it to two students or three students, we're only giving it to one student and we're going to exclude two students from this group. So in this case, we only have one student getting all the prizes. So since all these students are distinct from one another, we have to pick one out of these three students to receive all the prizes. And this student could be any of the three students. So right off the start, we have to choose three different choose one out of the three different students to receive the prizes. And this can be done in three ways. Then, since we have one student who's receiving all the prizes, each of the five prizes can go only in one spot. So this would be one times one times one times one times one. Now, that's just simply one. So then we see that the number of ways to distribute the five prizes such that two students get zero prizes is just three different ways. So now, we have the total number of cases and we have the cases in which not all the students receive at least one award. So at this point, you might be tempted to just subtract this complementary case from the total number of cases. But if you do that, you'll see that this won't exactly work out well as all of our answer choices end with zero. And when we add this up and subtract this from 243, we're not going to get an answer choice that ends in zero. So what happened? This is because when we computed the number of ways to distribute five awards amongst two students, we actually already included this other case in it twice. Basically, in this arrangement, since we're just having each of the awards go arbitrarily to any of the two students, there is the possibility that this award will go to this student, this award will go to this student, and as a result, all the awards will be going to one student. And since we're counting the number of ways to exclude that student, in this arrangement, either of the two students will be excluded, and it'll count this twice. So, as a result, we see that this case is 
overcounted for twice. And in each of these examples, there are three different ways to do this. So in total, this case will be overcounted for six times. So this means when we do the complementary counting of subtracting each of these complementary cases, 96 and 3 from 243, we'd have to do 243 90, minus 96 plus 3. But then we would have to add 6 back in because as a result of this case being identical to this case and this case being counted numerous times, twice for each person, this case will get overcounted six times. So we're gonna have so it would be subtracted six extra times than what it would actually be. So in order to cancel this out, we'll have to add six back into the equation to take account for this overcounting and make the numbers come out as they should. So this is the final expression that you should get to compute the number of ways that these awards can be distributed. Now, at this point, it's pretty simple. We can just simplify the middle part into 99. And then if we add 6 to that, we get 243 minus 93. Now, if you could follow along for the rest of this video, I don't think I need to explain to you what 243 minus 93 is. Simple subtraction will just tell you it's 150. So, based on all this counting, we see that our final answer is B. So, this number 23 was not really a creative to solve problem as the procedures that I've listed throughout this video are just simple introduction counting abilities. The ability to use complementary counting, the ability to break up a counting problem into cases, and the ability to know and take account for overcounting. These are all relatively simple skills in a problem solver's abilities. But this problem itself was rated number 23 to test the test taker's ability to use these skills. So this just shows if you just get your basic counting skills down, then AMC8 really won't have anything to throw at you as this was probably one of the hardest problems on the test. But the fact that you could solve it using elementary counting strats shows that these strategies are very essential in order to succeed in competition maths. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please consider checking out our other AMC8 videos. We have some from, AMC, from the AMC8 of 2020, but we also have quite a few from 2019. So if you're into competition maths, go check out those videos and hopefully you learn something new.